For weeks, we've been hearing about the political debate in Washington over the nation's debt limit. But before this, many Americans may never have known that our nation had a borrowing limit. Congress introduced it in 1917 to address some concerns over the nation's borrowing to pay for World War I. Before that, Congress had to vote on exactly how much it would spend and what it would spend it on each time. When they introduced the debt limit, Congress also gave the Treasury Department more freedom on how it spent borrowed money, and they expanded that free reign in the 1930s. This is about to pass legislation that will greatly ease the mortgage distress. But the debt limit has not exactly reined the country in because, since then, Congress has increased it 102 times. And in the last decade, it's been raised 10 times. Just back in 2002, it was $6.4 trillion. Now it's $14.3 trillion, and they're debating raising it a lot higher, potentially up to $16 trillion. You might wonder, as we increase this debt limit up and up and up, who is so willing to loan money to the United States? Well, one big party is China. I want to uh, welcome the president of China to our ranch. It's amazing if you think about where they were just in 2001. China only owned about $79 billion of U.S. Treasuries back then. And just in the last few years, they've gone over $1 trillion. The positive side of having countries like China that lend us all this money is that it keeps interest rates low across the entire U.S. economy. If the country can borrow at a cheap rate, it means that companies pay less to borrow and our credit card and mortgage interest rates are lower. So hardly realizing it, they come into their purchasing stage and are off on a wild, non-stop ride. But the negative side as the United States debt has grown is that the interest payments we have to pay each year to all these lenders has grown a lot too. Now we're paying about $188 billion in interest every year. That's nearly equal to how much the federal government spends on education, agriculture, housing and urban development, and transportation combined. One way to think about the financial situation of the United States is to think of your own finances. If a credit card company loans you a bunch of money and then you miss a payment, they are going to jack your interest rate up. Right now, the United States enjoys interest rates far below other countries, particularly other countries that have debt problems. The United States pays only 3% interest on 10-year bonds. Greece pays far more, close to 20% interest on its bonds. Even Italy pays 5%. And so what's been at risk here as Congress debates the debt and the debt limit is that international investors and buyers of treasuries will say to the United States, we want more interest, just like your credit card company would say to you if you missed a payment. There are no easy answers, though, because we're still in a very weak economy. And it might be hard right now to wean off of all this borrowing that we've gotten used to.